Ali Asghar Borujerdi, better known as Asghar the Murderer, stands as the first recorded serial killer and rapist of 20th century Iran. Born in the late 19th century, Asghar's life was steeped in crime from the beginning. His childhood was not one of innocence and play, but rather, a twisted apprenticeship in the family business of crime. His father, a notorious bandit, was a man of ill repute, known for his murderous activities. With over 40 civilian kills to his name, he proved a fearsome figure, casting a long, dark shadow over Asghar's formative years. The apple, as they say, didn't fall far from the tree. The Boru Jerdi family's legacy was one of blood and terror, a legacy that Asghar would not only inherit but also expand upon in the most horrifying ways. In his youth, Asghar left his homeland behind, moving to the neighboring country of Iraq. This relocation marked the beginning of a new chapter, a chapter filled with unspeakable acts of violence and perversion. From a tender age of 14, Asghar began his reign of terror, targeting adolescent boys in the city of Baghdad. His monstrous inclinations were not limited by borders. After escaping from Iraq, he continued his murderous spree in the capital city of Iran, Tehran. Asghar's life was a twisted tapestry of criminality, woven with threads of assault, rape, and murder. His victims were young, their lives abruptly and brutally cut short by a man who justified his heinous acts with perverse logic. He targeted those he deemed useless and beautiful, claiming they would grow up to become thieves. Asghar's life of crime began early, initiating a path that would lead him to become a terror in both Iraq and Iran. His story serves as a chilling reminder of the depths of depravity that human nature can sink to, a stark contrast to the norms of society. As we delve further into the dark abyss of Asghar's life, brace yourself for a journey into the heart of darkness, where humanity is but a distant memory. Asghar's reign of terror began in the streets of Baghdad at the tender age of 14. Let's take a moment to imagine Baghdad in the early 20th century, a city gripped by an unseen horror. A child predator, barely out of boyhood himself, prowling the streets, hunting his victims with a chilling precision. This was the beginning of Asghar the murderer's reign of terror. Asghar's victims were primarily adolescent boys. His twisted rationale? He targeted those he deemed useless and beautiful. Children he believed would grow into thieves. This misguided, monstrous ideology fueled his brutal actions, leading to an unimaginable number of victims. Asghar was convicted of raping and killing 25 young boys in Baghdad, a number that sent shockwaves through the city. But the true number of his victims may never be known. The discovery of each new body, mutilated and discarded, sent fresh waves of fear rippling through the community. Parents kept their children close, the streets fell quiet, and yet the murders continued. Asghar's modus operandi was as meticulous as it was horrifying. He would lure his victims, often vulnerable street children, with promises of food or money. Once he had gained their trust, he would lead them to a secluded location, where he would commit his heinous acts, leaving the bodies to be discovered later. Despite the growing fear and the mounting body count, Asghar evaded capture. His ability to blend into the crowd, to appear as just another face in the bustling streets of Baghdad, allowed him to continue his gruesome spree. As the net began to close in, Asghar made the decision to flee. He escaped the clutches of the law, leaving behind a city paralyzed by fear and a legacy of terror that would haunt Baghdad for years to come. His departure marked the end of one chapter, but it was far from the end of his story. Escaping the clutches of Iraqi law enforcement, Asghar fled to Iran, where his reign of terror would continue. In 1933, Asghar brought his horrific practices to Tehran, Iran, continuing his murderous spree. The city, known for its vibrant culture and bustling life, was soon cloaked in a pall of dread and fear. Asghar, like a predator, prowled the streets of Tehran, hunting for his next prey. His targets were always the same, young, vulnerable boys, the beautiful and the useless, as Asghar chillingly described them. He justified his actions with a twisted logic, claiming that these children would grow up to be thieves and he was merely ridding society of future criminals. But the city of Tehran was not to be silenced. The discovery of mutilated bodies sparked a wave of terror that swept through the city. The gruesome sight of these young victims, their lives brutally cut short, left a city in shock and mourning. People lived in fear, parents held their children close, and the streets of Tehran were filled with whispers of a lurking monster. The police launched an intensive investigation, 
The city was on high alert, and every suspicious activity was scrutinized. The break in the case came when Asgar was found with bloody clothes and a knife. The evidence was damning and the net closed in around him. Asgar's reign of terror came to an end when he was finally arrested, but the nightmare was far from over. His capture brought relief, but the scars he left behind were deep and raw. The city of Tehran would forever remember the year 1933, the year a trail of blood stained its streets and a monster named Asgar lurked in its shadows. In 1934, Asgar faced the full force of justice for his heinous crimes. The long shadow of his reign of terror was finally set to end. Asgar was put on trial, a grim theater where the full extent of his atrocities were laid bare. His confession was chilling, a stark recount of his crimes, devoid of remorse or regret. He had killed and raped 33 young adults, eight in Tehran, and the rest in Baghdad. His twisted justifications for his actions were as disturbing as his crimes, claiming he targeted useless and beautiful children who he believed would grow up to become thieves. Justice was swift and unyielding. Asgar was sentenced to nine years in prison, a mere prelude to the final act of his life. His sentence was more than a punishment, it was a symbol of society's condemnation of his horrific acts. But his days in prison were numbered. Asgar's story was not destined to end behind bars. The sentence of execution was handed down, a grim finale to a life marred by violence and cruelty. He had played his part in a horrifying drama, and now the curtain was set to fall. His execution marked the end of his reign of terror, but his name would not be easily forgotten. Asgar's end came swiftly, but his name would live on, echoing through history as a symbol of fear and depravity. Despite his death, Asgar's name continues to incite fear, even decades later. His chilling legacy has left an indelible mark on both Iran and Iraq, forever altering their perception of crime and the depths to which humanity can sink. His name is synonymous with a reign of terror that held two nations hostage. The echoes of his crimes reverberate through the annals of their histories, a grim reminder of the monster that once walked among them. Asgar the murderer, a name that reminds us of the darkness that can lurk in the hearts of men, serves as a chilling testament to the heights of human depravity. We hope you found this deep dive into the life and legacy of Asgar the murderer as informative and intriguing as we did while researching it. As a channel dedicated to bringing you the most fascinating aspects of history, we're always interested in your feedback. Would you like to know more about serial killers from different parts of the world? Would you like us to create more videos like this? Our community thrives on interaction and we value your input. Do you know of any notorious serial killers in your country or region? If so, share their story in the comments below. Who knows, your suggestion might inspire our next video. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your engagement not only helps us grow, it also ensures that you won't miss out on any future deep dives into history. Thank you for being a part of our community, for your curiosity, and for your continued support. Together, we're turning the pages of the past and bringing history to life. Thank you for journeying with us into the icy realms of yesteryears. Your engagement is highly appreciated and significant. It underlines the resonance of our content. If you found the video engaging, please to click the like button. This aids us in understanding content you connect with. We also wholeheartedly invite you to enrich our content and our community of knowledge enthusiasts with your thoughts and impressions. Do share them in the section dedicated for comments below. Lastly, if you have not done so yet, we urge you to subscribe to our channel. Your patronage motivates us to further delve into history, to unearth tales that sculpt our world. From every one of us here, we express our deepest gratitude for your unwavering support.